The Bible, like any other book or subject of interest, has been misunderstood and misinterpreted by many individuals through the centuries. The result is that some of these problems have become part of Christian belief and influenced popular culture. Let's take a look at some of the most common biblical misconceptions and see what the scriptures have to say. Years ago, I was introduced to the belief in the rise of the Antichrist and his persecution of Christians. In one publication, there were depictions of believers being hunted down and decapitated in a mobile guillotine for not having the mark of the beast on their hands or foreheads. In more recent years, novels have been written dramatizing the rise of this figure, as well as movies, comic books, and video games. These stories are frightening and entertaining but they demonstrate another biblical misconception that's been popularized over the years. There's a long list of individuals who have been identified as the Antichrist. In World War II, it was Adolf Hitler. During the Cold War, Nikita Khrushchev, leader of the Soviet Union, was given this title. In the early 70s, as the Paris peace talks to end the Vietnam War were underway, Henry Kissinger's name was transliterated into Hebrew letters, assigned numeric values using a mathematical formula, and totaled. The sum of the values ascribed to the letters were then interpreted as proof that he was the Antichrist described in the book of Revelation. Who is the Antichrist, or will there be a single individual we can identify as the Antichrist? Let's see what the scriptures have to say. The term Antichrist appears five times in the scriptures. All of these occurrences appear in the writings of John. Addressing Gnostic influences, John writes, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time, in 1 John 2.18. John states there were many Antichrists and refers to a spirit or attitude, not a person. This attitude is one that opposes the gospel and Christ. John defines this as he states, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world, in 1 John 4, 3. This passage lets us know that the spirit of Antichrist was present in the world at the time of John's writing, manifesting as a spirit of deception, denying the identity of Christ. There are other ways that this spirit of unbelief can manifest in our time. Any doctrine that can't be supported by Scripture partakes of the spirit of Antichrist. Teaching things that are incorrect is a denial of Christ as it compromises the authority and identity of the Word and Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. A multitude of so-called Christian doctrines have created division in the religious world. Paul indicates that this is the working of Satan, who seeks to blind the minds of humans so they can't see the truth of the gospel and be saved, in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Since the beginning, humans have rejected God's authority. Paul speaks of this as he deals with false teaching about the second coming that plagued the Thessalonians. Describing a coming apostasy, Paul explains how this could happen and what God would do. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness in 2 Thessalonians 2, 10-12. Christ also warned of future deceptions as he spoke to his disciples. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, in Matthew 24, 24. Deceivers and their lies would be very convincing. The fabric of the deception would be so believable that even those who understand the scriptures will be challenged at times. Well-articulated arguments, as well as great signs and wonders, will deceive a great many people. We have a defense against deception, and that's the gospel, God's power to save in Romans 1.16. As we turn our minds to God, submit to His will by accepting what we read, and then obey it, 
We become enlightened in a godly way, and this attitude will lead to salvation if we're faithful in Revelation 2.10. Evil rulers and powers will come and go. That's the history of the world and mankind. The gospel will continue to be misrepresented, mistaught, ignored, and denied. This is the spirit of Antichrist, not some world ruler. That makes the idea of Antichrist much more dangerous and immediate than misconceptions of a turbulent time in the future.